Hi everybody, it is the 17th of January 2024 and I'm a little bit behind with this one but what I thought we'd do is read through the update 1.24 experimental release blog post and patch notes. Bit of a smaller one this one. Generally the first update that we have of the year is more of a kind of a, uh, a housekeeping update where the devs concentrate on bug fixes and stuff like that but there is some interesting stuff in here and of course it's live already on the experimental uh, side of daisy which is available for pc and xbox unfortunately not on playstation but it'll be coming to public um, servers so and playstation probably in three to four weeks time so let's see what they've got to say let's see what Adam, Adam Franku has to say greeting survivors it's pretty much tradition at this point that our awesome community breaks Daisy's record for the highest player count every new year it was definitely a confidence boost this time around as we face a number of challenges in this year's plan by far the most ambitious we've had since the engine switch in 2018. Ooh, that's exciting. But it's far too soon to talk about such things here. Instead, this post is dedicated to the year's first experimental release, Game Update 1.24. So maybe Adam is alluding to the AI update that they said they were going to have a go at last year, but that didn't actually happen. So maybe the AI update is going to happen. Well, an AI, I mean the, the, the way that zombies behave or the infective behave. As with most updates early in the year, this one includes a clean sweep. Basically, we went through our backlog and tackled a variety of lingering issues. Let's go through some of the major ones so you know what to focus on while you're enjoying the experimental branch. The collision geometries of vegetation. So what they've done here is when you're running around in Daisy, everything has collision boxes um, and what it looks like is previously the trees and shrubs around Daisy had very complicated collision boxes and they've changed these to be much simpler. So the idea is that servers can, um, I guess, have less load on them and especially things like probably the you know Xbox Ones and PlayStation 4s have got simpler um, collision boxes to deal with. The catch though, and Wobo has pointed out this in a video that I think he released today, is that if you have a simpler collision box, what it might mean is that you could be shooting at someone who's you know a number of trees away in a wooded area, and you can actually have clear line of sight through the branches, but your bullet actually interacts with the collision box of the tree. And although the bullet bot might not actually stop, it may well be deflected. So it's something we're going to have to watch out for in wooded areas or when you're shooting through trees. Although these uh, simpler hitboxes m might make it easier for the server to perform, it might make fighting in wooded areas a little bit more um, unpredictable. Speaking of particles, we took a look at firearm particles and optimised them for smoother gunplay. Um, again, so that, you know when you're firing your gun and all the bits flying off, apparently that'll be better. We also increase the recoil slightly in several automatic firearms. When they say slightly, we'll probably have to test that. Furthermore, we unified our approach to randomly loaded firearms that spawn in the world. The ch this change now makes it impossible to recognise whether a firearm was dropped by a player or spawned in recently. So the idea is that when you find a gun with ammo or if it's got ammo in it that that ammo may already be loaded now i've had a look at the files and i don't think this is something you can set in the files as in per per gun you know you can't say okay when you find a deagle they'll all be loaded i think it's a random um, setting that is applied when the weapon spawns in I haven't seen in any of the files yet where you can turn this on or off so maybe you could have it so that it goes back to the old way but maybe there will be but it, I mean it's a, I don't see why it would be a problem to have it on all the time anyway because as they say the reason for this is so that when you find a gun um, previously to this update if it's got if it's loaded you know a player's dropped it um, whereas this one a gun you might pick it up might be loaded might not be loaded so that's not quite so obvious Apart from the fact that we're all pretty good now <laughs> knowing where things spawn, aren't we? So you tend to know where the real spawns are for, for items and the stuff that's just been dropped. We've dramatically improved the way weapon lifting behaves, making it smoother and more precise now. We also improved the way weapon lengths are calculated. We hope these changes will make close quarter combat with firearms less frustrating. You know, this is where you've got your gun, you're ADSing, or you're, 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 you're pointing, you're aiming your gun, you're moving along. 
and you're hit against the edge of a wall or something like that and you know your gun bounces up so we'll have to see how that works um, unfortunately we had to postpone making more complex changes to the infected ai though we still found time to investigate some of the issues as, as a result we significantly reduced the noise from the impact of bullets this means the infected won't be so easily drawn to the impact far from fired bullets particularly helpful when suppressed firearms are used we also increased the damage output of blunt melee weapons and tools against the infected and animal ai this was done by adding a portion of the shock damage into the total damage dealt. So you should be, if you've got something like a baseball bat, it should now work better against uh, the zombies. Moving on, a noteworthy improvement was also made to bandaging. If your character has multiple bleed sources and your bandage stack has enough uses, you can now continuously bandage without any interruptions. And I believe, again, through Robo's video, this is the same for rags and for the sewing kit. So instead of just stopping, you know, say you've got two bleeds and you, you, you bandage and you know one bleed goes and the, now what will and then you've got to start bandaging again. What will happen now is your character will keep on using those bandages from that stack until they've used up. So what we'll do now, let's jump across and let's have a look at the patch notes as well. So here we go. So added the Vicar rifle. So the Vicar rifle is like a mini VSS, I guess. It's like well, is it right? It's it's like a assault rifle version of the VSS without a suppressor. Uh, <laughs> it takes the 9 by 39 mil uh, bullets and there's a 30 round mag for it, which can now be fitted to the Asphal and VSS, which is pretty cool, isn't it? We've now got the camouflage variants of the ballistic helmet, which is good because we were a bit short of different NATO helmets, so that'll be good to look at. The bookshelves have now got the winning entries of the Daisy book contest that was going on last year, and I think Lad one of i think he won one and i think his books on one of them as well sounds for crafting impro impro sorry sounds for crafting improvised clothing from rags has been changed sounds for crafting base building kits changed sounds for crafting a bone knife sounds for wringing out for clothing sounds for splitting firewood sounds for breaking down bushes with hands animations for cleaning hands with a cooking pot and gasoline canister i also understand from watching the dev stream or the highlights of it last time is that uh, sounds of the guns have been changed Specif specifically the SKS has different sounds now um, lots of stuff has been fixed so we'll skip that changed here we go changed the collision checks for weapon raising for better accuracy reconfigured the calculation of weapon lengths for more accurate collision detection shock damage of blunt weapons now be, be partially translated into health damage so that means that blunt things are better against infected bandages is now continuous action removed outdated server browser filters partial optimizations on network traffic simplified collisions of trees for better behavior with vehicles and reduced performance impact from penetrating shots gave basic chemical protection to the okzk cap the great helmet chest plate tripod and barrel can now be repaired using the blowtorch pulling a body from a vehicle is now done by simply pressing f instead of holding um, adjusted insulation values of tractors and police clothing for consistency rebalance the weight of tools and melee weapons reduce the weight of shovels reduce the weight of plant material it is no longer possible to split plant material adjusted the recoil of several automatic firearms which said they've said they've made um, more recoil for the assault rifles Reduce the fire rate of the Vega and slightly lowered its recoil. That's the uh, semi-automatic, was it fully automatic shotgun? Fully automatic, I think it is, isn't it? Reduced area in which infected would be alerted by bullet impacts. Reduce the alert level impact on infected by suppressed shots. Slightly increase the silencing effect of the pistol suppressor. Regular infected will keep their alert state for slightly longer periods. Interesting. Tweak the overheating particles of firearms. Updated the sounds of the SK. There we go. That's what I said. The SK. Then I updated the game credits. In Livonia, they've updated the Lukov airfield. Um, and then on the server, I did play a small editor. Now has. Uh, I looked through this earlier and I couldn't see anything that I kind of really understood to be applicable to us and JSON and XML editing, especially on uh, console servers. But we'll have to see. I had a look through the. Um, oh, here we go. Changed. Yeah, this is this one I did say. Change player spawn gear JSON. If a particular preset has an empty or undefined character type, the character model last set in character creation menu we use for that preset. So what that means is, 
with the custom um, gear that you can have, if as long as on the JSON you don't have all the character names at the top, someone can choose, or it looks like you'll be able to choose your character again. So you can choose you know, which character you want to be as, you know, a woman or a man, or whichever particular you want. And then when you spawn in, when you get a custom a gear set if that's set up on the server you will remain as that character i know it's something that lots of people ask for uh, on the launcher the password window will now allow for use of the password uh, da, 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 da. modding see again this wasn't mm, anything that I, I really understood or could do so there we go um so we've got the new gun we've got some new helmets and we've got the ability to keep our um, character type when we have a custom character, which is cool. Um, what I'll do as well is I will link to the blog post and the uh, patch notes in the description below this video. I'll also link to Wobo's all the new stuff in Daisy Update 1.2 video for 1.24 video because he is really rather good at doing these, probably better than I am. Well, definitely better than I am. And what I'll do is I will do a hands on with 1.24 at some point. Probably <laughs> over the next couple of days when I have a day off. Um, but there we go. Update 1.24, the first update of 2024. This is going to be a very exciting year for DayZ um, as it goes from strength to strength. As Adam says, it's just had its highest ever concurrent number of players on PC and console. I think it was on G January the 14th, I think it was, or January the 15th. 330,000 people. We're playing Daisy on PC and console on that day, which is absolutely fantastic. Anyway, that's enough for me. What do you think? Put your questions and comments down below, and I will, of course, see you again soon.